our booth. Um, and I think that is just about it. That's, I think that leads us to questions. What did we not fill in? What's what your did, booth number again? 2008. Yeah, if anyone has any questions, please. Yes, yes. sir. Uh, do you have any plans to do anything more with uh, Quantum and Woody? Uh, yes. Yes, actually, we do. Quantum and Woody uh, is the story of the world's worst uh, superhero team. Uh, two brothers who hate each other, who have to uh, bond their, these bracelets that they wear in order to keep their, uh, their powers in check, because their powers otherwise would uh, destroy them. Destroy them. Disintegrate into this subatomic level. My, like my fourth divorce. Uh, but uh, we, they are uh, these two brothers who hate each other but have to work together, and there's a goat. Um, and it's really because of all that that yes, we'll never really, we can't quite quit Quantum and Woody. We keep trying to, frankly, but no, we just can't. Now we're, uh, like everything uh, in, our, in, our, in our line, we do nine titles a month on average, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more, but we try to keep it really tight and controlled. Uh, we want to make sure that we're able to put out the best books possible and spend as much time as we can promoting them. Um, and so as a result of that, we only have a very limited amount of uh, titles, and so we're always working on a lot of different stuff. So yes, you're going to see more Quantum and Woody when we get it right. Yes, sir. I got here at the tail end. Any, any it's word on stuff, man? I tell you, gosh. Any word on stuff? Don't let any of this guy right here know about any of those announcements. All right. <laughs> any word on the uh, Shadow Man anytime next year? Um, like, like Quantum and Woody? I think, yeah, much like Quantum and Woody. Same answer. Same answer. There's a. Uh, Quanta, Shadow Man is the. One of those characters that we absolutely love, that we definitely want to get right. He uh, met, had a really great run, um, and then we uh, were actually made a few appearances. He made an appearance in Ninjak not too long ago. Um, we're probably going to maybe see him again pretty soon. Uh, but uh, but yes, to answer your question, sooner than later you'll be hearing something about Shadow Man. And I'm not sure uh, this. If you saw it this summer, we, uh, as part of our 4001 AD event, uh, we had a one shot that focused on uh, the Shadow Man of the 41st century. So, for the latest look on Shadow Man, that's where yeah. I would point you to. Great story. Yep. You had a question, then? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, because you guys have like one ongoing book, uh, EXO, uh -huh. and the others are kind of limited series, for new people coming in. Is there is there a timeline? People want to know where you know, it's like. What miniseries do I read to go to the next miniseries to go to the next miniseries? Right. Sure. Because it's not as easy as reading a sequential, ongoing, one set of numbered type. Right. I yeah, and I, I hear what you're saying. That is um, that is part of why we do you know, the 999 trades. Um, that's why every time we do an event, we do it specifically because, uh, in a way, that can it can be the first uh, event that you read. Anytime we do a mini series, like we do Blood, uh, we did Book of Death. We just um, uh, we're done, did, we just finished 4001. We're doing, we did Armor Hunters. We did the Harbinger Wars. Um, we also every time we do a new title, we're very conscious of the fact that that new title is going to be someone's first Valiant book. Um, that said, you could go backwards and read things in the chronological order. You could begin with Exo Manowar Volume One and then do Bloodshot Volume One and do Harbinger Volume One. I get that. I didn't get that right. Anyway, yeah, but uh, you could go through and do those. But and there have been some fans who put piece together what they think is the um, the 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 historical line of it. But the truth of the matter is, is that we do our very best to make sure that all of our titles stand alone. So you can pick up volume one of anything, and it would be enough to get started on. And I think. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, please. Yeah. So I think the question is. Right. You know, like Faye, obviously, you can just do Faye's volume one. But right. She ties into Harbinger, and there's a lot of storyline. You know, like in the first volume of Faye, that. Absolutely. With from so yeah, sort of and you could go backwards and read Harbinger. You could go backwards and read Harbinger first, um, but you don't have to. Much in the same way, you and I could meet and we could sit down and have lunch. And just because I haven't known you since you know since you uh, elementary school, we could still be friends. Um, I think that there is uh, the the point is is that you know you we are very conscious of the fact that you will be meeting Faith for the first time. 
it, whether you meet, uh, read the first issue of the ongoing series or the first issue of the mini series or the first issue of Harbinger, at some point you're meeting faith for the first time. And, and that and the, all of those should be enough for you to, to understand and be able to uh, put the pieces together. Um, that said, yes, it is a shared universe. Um, and so everything does tie together at one point or another. But unlike um, unlike some of the things we've heard about other other like publishing events and that sort of thing, like if you read something where a lot of our teams get together, you don't necessarily have to be an expert in those teams in order to understand the the crossover. Right. Now I understand that. I think the question more is if someone picks up a volume one of something and likes it and wants to read the previous ones. When when they, they read the volume one. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, what was that? I was being a smart ass and I didn't hear no. the second part. So, <laughs> so what? No, I mean, is there something that, that gives an order of, say, someone says, oh, I really love this, what else has there been, and how can I read them to keep those stories? There are actually, in several of our trade paperbacks, there's, uh, there are reading maps. Um, and, um, and so we do some of that. As uh, We have never put together like a cohesive map of the Valiant universe. That might be fun to do at some point, and I know that some fans have. Yeah, a um, lot of fan blogs. Yeah. They, they all do. But yeah. all that I'm associated with, I mean, they, they get more into detail than, the than we do. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> the trade, the trade, but he's absolutely right. The trade papers are a good guide. Yeah, but if you want to get yeah. really intricate into it, you can go to the... Well, like, you know, if I get a question that says, do I read Armor Hunters before Harbinger Wars? Or do I read Harbinger Wars before right. Armor Hunters? <laughs> They're both a complete volume, yeah. but what's the... You know, like, Marvel Superhero yeah, Secret it, Wars it, happens before Secret Wars 2. It's not chronological order of printing. That might, that might help you, because that was the way it was in which it was written. Um, but, um, but I think that, to, you know... Again, I hear what you're saying, and I think that's part and parcel of the problem of uh, reading serial fiction. Is that at some point you have to? Everybody jumps in somewhere, you know. So, that, but the good news is, is there's a lot to binge on. So you're gonna you're gonna be able to fill those things in. I personally really like the analogy, though, of uh, you know, when I first meet you, that's the first. That's the, as far as you and I are concerned, that's the first part of your timeline. At at some point, I'm gonna maybe I'll get a chance to go back and learn more about you. So, yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Any word on the movies? Yes. Um, if you could uh, have the Koreans stop releasing emails about uh, major movie companies, that might actually make those things go faster. <laughs> How's that? Uh, you know, when there, some, there was a big announcement about Sony uh, having a slate of five pictures of, our, of ours, starting with Bloodshot, then Harbinger, then <coughs> Harbinger Wars. The part of the reason that announcement came out was because uh, the Sony's uh, email servers were hacked, and uh, that was going to come out either way. Um, as it as it is, that, that kind of slowed some things down. But there's still many things, and nearly everything we have right now is in some some level of pre, uh, pre-production. Uh, we finance our own uh, development, so we're it's working on it every day. Though every single day, we have we have an army of people who are making that happen. There's something really Really cool, gonna be announced what? New York? New York Comic Con. Oh my gosh. Here. Maybe you've already seen it if you pay attention to the blogs, but there is something in There's the works. Something. Something in the works that we can't officially come out and say, but yeah. Piggybacking on that. Yeah. Any, anything on the animation front? I go backwards and uh, read the transcript of what I just said and just add in animation and take out the Koreans. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Everything, yeah. yes, there are many things being developed. We have a lot of right now. Hands in many points. Yes. 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 Uh, yeah, I'm probably going to get the same answer as you just gave twice, but <laughs> what about um, the recent announcement of like the Ninjak stuff with Michael Rowe and the online series? Is there an announcement about that? Or well, there being an announcement about that? I don't know that you want to get claims. two people who are paid by people who might be um, unhappy if we said more than has already not been announced. <laughs> we can't control what actors want to do on social media. That's true. But if you were listening during New York Comic Con, you might get some answers. Yeah, I think the actor you got involved in actually. Yeah, which could be. Yeah. Anyone else? All good? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, what special things do you guys have going on at the booth? That's a great question. Hey, and you're going to get something special for that. <laughs> 
Right after this, we're going to have a, a signing mm -hmm. with um, who else is going to be at that Roberts, Rayford Roberts, who's writing Harbinger Renegades, Archer Armstrong, um, Fred Van Lente, who did the first Archer and Armstrong series, and currently uh, Generation Zero. And then finally, B. Clay Moore, who will be writing our new uh, miniseries coming out in November called Savage. They will all be. <laughs> yes, Savage is awesome. <laughs> I'm telling you, it is amazing. Imagine, imagine a kid who's the uh, the prodigy of um, David, Beckham. David Beckham and what was her name? Posh Spice. What was her name? I can't remember. Victoria Beckham. There you go, Victoria. Uh, imagine that baby instead of being raised in I'm sure what must be a lavish lifestyle that I'll never be able to even see. Uh, imagine instead he gets raised on an island that is uh, populated by dinosaurs and has to essentially become uh, that. And imagine all of that uh, illustrated by Louis LaRosa and, um, and Clayton Henry. And holy, yes, exactly. It's awesome. So yeah, B. Clay Moore is going to be here signing. I think we have uh, some preview pages in that, that fake book. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's um, we are also out. passing out uh, the first issue of Faith's new ongoing, uh, mini, or ongoing series, I'm sorry, which is also a flip book of a preview, preview of all of our new titles coming this year. There is also a, uh, an exclusive cover uh, for Generation Zero, which is the newest uh, run, uh, newest part, portion of the Harbinger story. Uh, a lot of the kids that we met in Harbinger Wars, we're going to see them for the first time in, in, in a while. They are essentially like the A-team of our universe. Um, if you're a teenager and you have a problem, and if you can find them, uh, they will uh, they will come. And it is, uh, again, written by Fred Van Lente. We have an ex, uh, a, a Baltimore exclusive cover uh, of that book with a fantastic cover. It's actually at the table. Also, uh, we have a little, uh, we have a tradition at uh, Valiant that is, uh, that goes back to when Valiant started, uh, the first Valiant started in the, uh, in the 90s. Uh, it is the gold logo edition. And so the, the gold logos really are something that we do as a thank you to the fans. You cannot buy a gold logo version of number one. Uh, you may only earn it. Uh, and this, actually, I just recently had to explain this to a retailer who really wanted to buy some. And I said, no, no. I tell you what, if you cosplay as Faith every day, then maybe we'll talk about it. But if you show up to an event in a Harbinger t-shirt, if you, uh, if you come uh, as cosplay as one of our characters, if you get something uh, a tattoo uh, that is a valiant character, which I do not recommend, but awesome, right? <laughs> um, if you're care well, you have to be wearing that. Now, come on, let's 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 put that on. If you do uh, whatever you do to show that you are a fan of the Valiant comics, and frankly, we have some of the best fans in comics, and I know a lot of people say that, but I will tell you right now that the Valiant fans who were around, uh, that were around in the 90s and stayed together during the period where there were no Valiant comics and were with us in, in early 2012 when we started and were there in force day one, these are the best fans in comics because they have uh, they have really made what we do happen. And so we want to make sure we say thank you. And so to them and to you, the new fans, because you are now have listened to the two of us drone on for what, an hour? Uh, and are obviously ready to go. Um, we want to do something special. So come by the booth and you're going to have to use a secret password. Now, in the past, I'm not going to say some people have moderated these panels and have not given you clear instructions. I'm not going to say that they, you gave, they gave you clear instructions and you chose not to listen to them. <laughs> I'm going to say that each and every one of you are on message, right? Right now, you are, you are hearing the sound of my voice as I say this is a secret password. <laughs> that does not mean you stand in front of the booth and shout the secret password. That does not mean you tweet the secret password. It does not mean that you tell every member of your family who was not in here the secret password. It means it's a secret password that you will have to come. That's just turn that off. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Nothing. you for mentioning that. Jeez, that wasn't. Are you recording live? Are you broadcasting? All right. 
I turn. Uh, I'm coming after you if this happens. <laughs> this is you. What is you? All right. Anyway, so you're gonna come up to a member of the Valiant team. You're all. We're all wearing our Valiant T-shirts. We're all working the booth. Ha group of handsome young men. I'm gonna tell you this right now. <laughs> Find one of us. Whisper in our ears. Okay. Do we get that? Harbinger. Okay. Everybody get it? Anybody not know it, the word? Right. That's not gonna do it. <laughs>